I'm with Richard Harvey from the British Messianic Jewish Alliance. Now, Richard, what is the British Messianic Jewish Alliance? Yeah, it's a fellowship of Jewish disciples of Jesus. It's the national alliance uh, for the UK, but there's about 14 national alliances around the world, Australia, South Africa, Britain, America, Israel, and they're all affiliated to the International Messianic Jewish Alliance. When we started and why were you actually started? Yeah, the British Alliance is the oldest of the alliances. It was started in 1866 by a man called Karl Schwartz, and he saw a need. He was a Jewish believer in Jesus from Germany, but he came, he was pastoring in central London, and he realized that there were many Jewish believers in Yeshua. This was in the 1860s who were needing fellowship with one another. They were often in difficult circumstances. They needed welfare and support. And uh, in fact, in the 19th century, there was a large number of Jewish people becoming believers in Jesus. So he sent out a letter in uh, May 1866 saying, we'd like to get as many possible Jewish believers in Jesus to meet together. We want to pray. We want to search the scriptures. We want to find out what God is doing amongst the Jewish people. This was just the beginnings of Zionism, just the beginnings of, of the British support for the uh, return of the Jewish people to the land. And at the forefront of this, there were these Jewish disciples of Jesus. So they met really as a prayer fellowship. And it still stayed that way. It's not a a professional organization. It's just an association of Jewish disciples of Jesus. We have a couple of hundred members around the UK. I estimate there's about 10,000 Jewish background believers in the UK churches, but most of them don't know each other and they often feel isolated and uh, they don't always feel it's easy to be known as being Jewish. So we try and provide a service of connecting them. We have Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, local meetings, all sorts of things. So you have a great history, really, don't you? It's the longest running association or messianic group, if you like, of Jews who believe in Jesus. There was an earlier one at the beginning of the 1800s. It was called the B'nai Avraham. 41 Jewish disciples of Jesus met under the auspices of what was then called the London Society for the Promotion of Christianity Amongst the Jews. It's now called CMJ, the Church's Ministry Among the Jewish People. You have it in Israel, you have it around the world. But these 41 Jewish believers in Yeshua, they were gathered together by a very uh, significant Jewish believer called Joseph Christian Frederick Fry or Frey. And he got the idea to have this B'nai Avraham, these sons of Abraham, and they met together for daily prayer, for fellowship, for mutual support. Sadly, it didn't last very long. It was like many what we call Hebrew Christian brotherhoods in the 19th century. But the 1866 one, which uh, Schwartz started, has continued right up to the present day. Is it difficult in the UK being Jewish and a believer in Jesus? Do many people not understand? Or does that actually open the door up to share to people? Well, Britain, as you know, has got a, a particular context. It's got a very anti-Semitic history. It expelled its Jews in 1290, I think it was. They were only unofficially readmitted in 1666. We invented the blood libel that the Jews were responsible for kidnapping a Christian boy and using its blood for Passover sacrifices. So there's been a strong anti-Jewish and anti-Semitic stream in Britain for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But there's also been a strong philo-Semitic mood of loving the Jewish people, particularly the Puritans who, like um, Oliver Cromwell and um, the poet Milton, really believed in a future for the Jewish people, a future restoration back to the land of Israel and also a future restoration back to the Messiah Yeshua. So within these two currents, Jews who believe in Jesus have had to navigate. 
Now, you can think there's actually been many famous Jewish disciples of Jesus. Benjamin Disraeli, the first Jewish prime minister, he, he could only enter parliament because he was officially a Christian. His father had him baptized in an argument with the local synagogue in Bevis Marx. And so Disraeli was able to pursue a political career. And when he was prime minister, he made no secret of the fact that he was Jewish or Jewish background. And he was often attacked for this. And yet he sort of set a standard for hundreds, if not thousands, of Jewish believers in Jesus in the 19th century and then in the 20th century despite the holocaust and despite anti-semitism that was very often local against jewish immigrants in the east end of london etc there have been jews who believe in jesus and what i find and i've been a believer in yeshua now for some 40 years is that most people are just very surprised and then because a lot of British Christians think that God has finished with Israel, that the church is the new Israel, that the, the prophecies have now been fulfilled in the church, they are what I would call replacement theology or supersessionist. So when they meet people like us, they often have to change their theology or try and say, well, are you still Jewish now that you've become a Christian? And yet, for many people, and, and you and I have friends like uh, we had new Mervyn Tilly and Elaine Roberts and others. These are Christians who have a great love for Israel and the Jewish people and have no problem in recognizing that, you know, all the first Christians were Jewish. Yeshua and his disciples were Jewish. So why shouldn't Jewish people still be followers of him today? And in fact, the the nations, the Gentiles or the the nations of the world have been grafted in to a Jewish faith in the Jewish Messiah that is now for everyone. And does a Jew convert to Christianity? Well, the word convert is really a red flag to Jewish people. And sadly, the word symbolizes all the, the Christian persecution of Jews. Jews were often forced to convert. They had to listen to sermons. In Russia, for example, they were given the option. They either join the army, the Russian army, or they uh, convert to Christianity, or they're put to death. The Spanish Inquisition, the same problem, even for those who were officially Cristianos Nuevos, new Christians. So when I use the word convert, I really have to use the Hebrew term to shuvah, to repent, to turn around, to turn away from sin and back to God. And in that sense, everybody, if they're going to be a follower of Yeshua, a disciple of the greatest rabbi who ever lived, they have to turn away from sin and back to God. But I don't really like to use the word convert because especially in the English or the British context, it's a sort of secret smear. It's like saying, well, you're not a proper Christian, you're a converted Jew. And at the beginning of the 19th century, and really this was why the Hebrew Christian Alliance, it was called then, it's now the Messianic Alliance, they had to make the point that you don't stop being Jewish when you believe in Jesus. It's no sin to be Jewish, so you don't have to repent of it or leave it behind. And they often were told, you know, the waters of baptism need to wash away your Jewishness. And they reacted strongly to that and say, no, we're not renouncing our heritage. We're still part of Israel, part of the Jewish people. And so the word convert is like other words that are there in Christian vocabulary that have a negative ring to Jewish people. So yes, I am, I've am. i made an act of repentance of teshuvah in Greek. It's the word metanoia, to change your mind or turn your mind around. But I don't see that I've given up being Jewish when I became a follower of Rabbi Jesus. It's be very difficult for a Jewish family if one of their members becomes a believer in Jesus. Is that very difficult? Well, in the past, it was very difficult, and often the Jewish believer would be thrown out of the home. I know that happened to a few of my friends. But I'm glad to say that because of the growing number of Jewish people who have become believers in Yeshua, 
and because of the influence of the Messianic Jewish movement, and really since the 1960s and 70s, hundreds of thousands of Jewish people around the world have become believers in Jesus. And as you and I know, the Jewish world is very pluralist. It's very mixed these days. Where you have two Jews, you have three opinions. Most Jews outside of the land of Israel are not Orthodox. They're Reform or they're secular, or they're some other form. Reform and conservative are the two largest groups in the UK these days. So I found with my family that I didn't have a hard time. My father became a believer in Jesus at the same time as me. One of my brothers became a believer in Jesus. My grandfather asked Jesus to be his Messiah at the age of 78. You're never too old to become a follower of Jesus. And I find now that this is one of the many options in a rather pluralistic and often secularized Jewish society. So there's much more tolerance these days, I find. Now you have a guide for preachers. Are there common mistakes that preachers make when it comes to the Jewish people? Yeah, it's a great question. I think for 2,000 years, there has been a, a Christian anti-Judaism in the way that people read often passages in the New Testament, which are really family arguments between Jesus and his disciples on the one side and the Pharisees or the Sadducees or the Herodians on the others. And these family debates have been taken out of context and used to perpetrate anti-Semitic or anti-Jewish myths. The Jews are stiff-necked. The Jews, the Pharisees, are hypocrites. The Jews are only asked after money, uh, like Judas Iscariot. And these anti-Jewish themes became sort of metaphors or tropes, as you would call them, for the way that Christians have related to Jews. And sadly, that has continued in the teaching of the church and the preaching of the church in all the main denominations, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, you know, there are all sorts of anti-Semitic stereotypes that people have about Jews and Judaism. And sadly, and I know we're going to come on to this because of the war right now between uh, Israel and Hamas, these anti-Semitic stereotypes are being repeddled and used against Israel and against Jewish people. Yeah, we've already spoken about anti-Semitism. Have many of your members experienced anti-Semitism over the past eight months since the war with Gaza? Certainly. I was in Israel on October the 7th, and, and several of our members were because there was an international conference in Israel just on the day the war broke out. So we've all, you know, we stand very firmly with our people in Israel. And the report from the Jewish Chronicle this week, the main Jewish paper, is that a survey done of Jewish leaders throughout Europe says that 80% of European Jewish leaders feel less safe post October the 7th. And this is true. You know, my cousin is the rabbi in a reform synagogue in central London, a woman rabbi. They've had women rabbis there for a long time, but they've had increased security outside the synagogue. And they've also had people in the synagogue causing upsets. Yesterday, I was sent a horrific photo of a car park in Sutton Coalfield in uh, north of England, just outside Birmingham, and it's a swastika, a German Nazi symbol, and kill the Jews. And the increase of anti-Semitic incidents since October the 7th has gone up more than 500%. And you read the Jewish Chronicle, the first half of it is all about not only the war in Israel, but how Jewish people in the UK are feeling often threatened and often fearful to be recognized as Jewish. Uh, we don't normally wear our yarmulkes in public. And if you're wearing a mug and David, a star of David, you'd probably cover it over. So I think what I've noticed is that the Jewish community in the UK has, has really, in a way, become more withdrawn and more fearful. And many Jewish people do not have Christian friends who've really shown them love and, and support. So we're very much in a, a group that is concerned about the war, 
very concerned for the hostages, very concerned that our families feel safe. Those who go to Jewish schools, there are some around the country, there's heightened protection there for the kids. And there is definitely that feeling of anxiety and concern. But I know that's the case also in Israel. It just is a different sort of context. It must be quite shocking to actually be in Israel on the day that the terrorist attack took place. Yeah, we. Um, I actually flew in on October the 7th. And as we landed on the tarmac at Ben Gurion Airport, the uh, captain said, well, we've had some... Uh, concerns and uh, please disembark quickly and make your way quickly to the um, terminal and as we were in the coach on the way from the airplane to the terminal la reddit la reddit get out get out lie on the ground and as we lay on the ground the uh, rockets were going off above us thankfully we were safe for hashem but it for me it was quite traumatic and then when i got to the um the guest house where we were staying i turned on the news and there on cnn news the american station there was a picture of us all lying on the ground with our butts in the air because there had been a cameraman and a news team on the same flight but what i think we felt is that we want to stand in solidarity with our people in the land and we also want to be a voice for the Jewish people here in the UK. So our members are writing letters to their members of parliament. They're writing letters to the Christian groups. We're trying to give a, a sort of a rationale for what's happening. Of course, we all have different views on the conflict and we all have different concerns about it, but we stand united with the Jewish people. And in the UK, as you probably are aware, the media especially, um, you know, organizations like the BBC, they don't want to call Hamas a terrorist organization. And the media often portrays Israel as being the only one that's wrong and doesn't really show both sides of the argument. And of course, there are different narratives. There are different ways that Israelis and Palestinians, that Jewish people and, and the others express their positions. And of course, most British people have never been to Israel. They don't have Jewish friends and they often just accept what the media tells them. So we have our work cut out to try to present an alternative or different perspectives on this and also to encourage people. We pray for peace and we long for peace. And for me, as a believer in Yeshua, who's the Prince of Peace, he is our ambassador of reconciliation between us and God. And so we are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation as well. When October the 7th happened, did you realize it would have a negative effect in the UK? Absolutely. My family are German Jewish and Polish Jewish in origin. So uh, the Holocaust has been a reality that I've grown up with. And pretty much immediately, I realized that this was such a traumatic and such a, a dramatic change in the situation that this was going to impact on Jewish people worldwide. And in the UK, shortly after that, we had cars driving round with Palestinian flags. We had anti-Semitic attacks on the increase, both in the press, in public and physical attacks. And yet, because the British Jewish community has a, a long history of, of really trying to integrate into UK society, you know, we've had, and that is still the case today. I think that um, the Jewish community as a whole is really trying to help the cause of Israel and the Jewish people by really having a lot of conversations wherever possible with people. And so the reaction of fear, that's an immediate emotional reaction. But then when you move from reaction to reflection and response, you know, we know that we're in it for the long haul. There's been a major conflict or war in Israel, Palestine every five or 10 years. And sadly, you know, there's not any immediate end in sight for the present conflict, although personally, and this is my view, you know, we, we have to see beyond this 
to see, you know, restoration of peace and, in my view, reconciliation. But um, the British Jewish community is, yes, very heightened in its awareness. I would say it's anxiety and certainly our our love and concern for our people. Uh, many of us have contacts and relatives and friends serving in the IDF, the Israeli forces. Many of us know people who've lost family or relatives in the um, the massacre on October the 7th. And, and we want to, um, you know, show solidarity with our people, but also be a voice for peace and hope and justice and reconciliation. What are your thoughts on the pro-Palestine marches in London? Have they shocked you? Well, some of the initial ones were very uncontrolled, but I actually recognize, you know, we live in a democratic country. And just as I I, uh, respect and argue for the right of Jewish people in Israel to um, have marches to demonstrate solidarity with our people in Israel. And I was on some of those, a big one in Trafalgar Square. So I recognize that we live in a democracy where we have freedom to protest as long as that is done nonviolently and respectfully. So I think the question is, where does protesting against Israel become anti-Semitism? And this is a very difficult question because, of course, most of us as Jewish people, we're very sensitive to that. But I think we have to have in a free society the ability to peacefully protest. And as long as those pro-Palestinian marches are respecting the rule of law and that they are not inflammatory, inciting racial hatred or political hatred, then this is my personal view, people should be free. And I'm proud of Britain that we generally try to preserve this. Now, I know that you have to take this on a case-by-case basis. And I also know, I mean, the picture of the car park yesterday, a swastika and kill Jews, that is just the most hateful and sickening, you know, graffiti. And sadly, that is continuing. And uh, we're getting daily reports of, of those types of things. But I also think the case has to be made for exactly what the issues are. You know, we've got this terrible war in Israel, Gaza right now. We've also got terrible wars in Russia and Ukraine and throughout the world. So, If we're going to be politically engaged, we have to be able to answer people's objections. We have to be able to speak in a way that understands their narrative and their understanding as well as ours. And I would just observe this, that most of the people on these marches have never been to Palestine. They're not Palestinian, but it's caught a popular mood. And in the recent general election we had, Two, I think there were two, maybe three candidates who were elected against the wider Labour Party. They were in, elected as independent candidates because they wanted to take the side of the Palestinians in Gaza. So we have to recognise that there is a minority position in British life that is actually pro-Palestine, and we have to meet these arguments in their own terms. Has this time been a time? to trust in Yeshua even more? It's certainly a time to pray and to call out to God. And I'm with my family in synagogue quite regularly, and we have prayer for the state of Israel. We have prayer for the UK. And it, it's really, we're coming up to Tish B'Av, lamenting and mourning for the destruction of the temple. And my prayer is that many of my people are recognizing that Yeshua, Jesus, is the only way to bring real peace in the Middle East. And and yet it's so hard because people are, I would say, going through a, a very traumatic time, a time of, you know, psychological stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, I think is there in the British Jewish community, certainly in many of my Israeli friends as well. So, yes, now is the time to call out to God and to trust Yeshua. But I wish that we could be able to share the good news of the Messiah in the way that really shows he is the answer to all our needs and to all conflicts, and we need to pray for him to return soon. What is your prayer for UK jury? Well, that God would protect us and that God would continue to show his faithfulness to us 
and that God would reveal Yeshua as Messiah of Israel and Prince of Peace to Jewish people, to Palestinians, to all British people as a whole. What's a website for people who'd like to know more about the work that you do? Yeah, well, we have a, a website, the bmja.net. It's quite easy to find. And, of course, I'm speaking today as, if you like, the BMJ president, but we all, like you have two Jews, you have three opinions. We're not, we have a basic basis of belief, a doctrinal basis, but we don't go into specifics on exactly what you have to believe about things that people disagree about and are still believers in Yeshua. So bmja.net, we'd love you to sign up for our updates. We have uh, regular blogs. We'll be releasing a letter to uh, a leading bishop in a couple of days who's said that she, they equate Israel with apartheid and we'll be responding to that. So we'd really appreciate your prayers and your support. Well, Richard, thank you very much for sharing today. Well, thank you, Paul. It's great to talk to you.